and welcome to Carnivore Wellness. My name is Rebecca. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of electrolytes on a carnivore diet. New carnivores are often told that they need to make sure that they are maintaining their electrolyte balance in the early days of transitioning to a carnivore diet. This is really important advice. So when we first transition to a carnivore diet, we are in the process of eliminating most, if not all, of the carbohydrates from our diets. Along with eliminating those carbohydrates from our diets, our body is also removing excess water because excess water is held on the body in order to uh, maintain that carbohydrate balance in the body. So no more carbs coming in, no need for near as much water stored on the body. This loss of water is great in giving early motivation, especially when it comes to the scale. Many people see that their weight will drop initially. However, as that water leaves the body, it takes with it a lot of the electrolytes that are stored in that water. So our bodies have to find a new normal in regulating their electrolyte balance in the absence of all this excess amount of water that the body really doesn't need to carry around. Now, this will happen and will regulate over time, but in the early days of carnivore, it is very helpful to supplement with electrolytes as this will keep you from feeling these very uncomfortable signs and symptoms of electrolyte imbalance. So some of those are things like confusion, irritability, even diarrhea or constipation could be because of an electrolyte imbalance. I know a lot of times we troubleshoot that talking about other aspects of what we're eating or not, but if you're experiencing diarrhea or constipation, it could be due to an electrolyte imbalance. Um, fatigue is another really big one. Around days three or four, people start to get what they call the keto flu, and it's essentially this imbalance of electrolytes, and it can cause you to feel really tired, kind of lethargic, and it leads us to another symptom, headaches. The headaches can be very, very real, and a lot of times those headaches are because of this electrolyte imbalance. A few other things that you might experience, um, a regular heartbeat. I have to say this, you know, for disclaimer purposes, if you are concerned about your heart health and you're experiencing irregular heartbeats, you need to go seek the advice, medical advice of a trusted physician. That said, an irregular heartbeat can be due to an electrolyte imbalance. So in order to make sure that you don't experience that symptom, it could be very wise to supplement with electrolytes. Another area where people often see this, um, this manifest in their bodies is in muscle cramps and spasms or even twitching muscles. So this is very common, especially when people aren't getting enough magnesium. That's one of the electrolytes that our bodies need. Another sign or symptom people can experience is nausea, that icky feeling. Um, we've all been there. We know what nausea feels like, but that could be due in part to electrolyte imbalance. Lastly is some numbness or tingling in your limbs, you know, fingers, toes, things like that. I think that's relatively uncommon, but if you're reaching that point, you definitely need to make sure that you are replenishing electrolytes. So what exactly are these electrolytes that I'm talking about? There's three electrolytes that our bodies need to maintain regulation. That's sodium, potassium, magnesium. Generally, the ideal ratio for those, depending on your source and where you look, but about 1,000 milligrams of sodium compared to 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Obviously, those are not all in a one-to-one -one ratio. By and large, what we mostly need is the sodium. You can get a, the bulk of this by salting your food to taste or even a little bit more. I personally, as a carnivore, continue to eat very salty food. I love the salt and my body seems to need high amounts of that salt. So salt to taste or even a little bit more. And then another thing is the potassium. It can be great to replenish the potassium um, electrolyte. However, you do have to be careful not to overdo it. That is one of the ones where you can overdo it. Now, thankfully, the way that this is found in, you know, a lot of our foods and whatnot, we're not going to overdo it on potassium. But if you happen to have some isolated form of potassium, do not go crazy adding it. It needs to be added in in the right ratios with the sodium and the magnesium as well. Magnesium, you know, 60 milligrams per day compared to the 1,000 milligrams of the sodium. It's much less, but also magnesium is one of those that is a bit harder to come by in our diets. And a lot of times new carnivores find they need to supplement with some magnesium. So what are some things, you know, the, and that supplement can come in the form of either something that you add to, say, your water, or, you know, it can be uh, topically applied. 
Um, you know, people enjoy some uh, magnesium sprays, especially if they're experiencing, you know, leg cramps or some cramping of some sort, spraying that magnesium directly on that part of the body. It's absorbed topically and that can be really beneficial. Another fun little way to get uh, extra magnesium is to take an Epsom salt bath. Um, that magnesium sulfate, you know, put it in the bath, it dissolves, you get in the bath, oh, it's so relaxing, but it's also increasing your magnesium absorption and that can help balance your electrolytes. So what are some quick and easy ways to replace your electrolytes? There are certainly some expensive, though quality ways to replace your electrolytes. You know, people often recommend that ele uh, element packets. Um, they do make a lot that are flavored with stevia, and I don't recommend those. But element makes a version of their raw, un unflavored, um, unsweetened uh, version of the electrolytes. It's really convenient, comes in a single packet, you dump it in your water, mix it in, doesn't taste great. I mean, it is electrolytes, so it's very salty, but you know, it's it's good for you, right? And it, it helps keep your electrolytes balanced, but that can be pricey. And a lot of times it's not readily available in stores. So if you wanted to go out and start carnivore today, what could you do? Well, you could consider, um, of course, salting your food to taste. The salt is the number one thing. And some people get by with just adding extra salt, and they really don't find that they need the extra potassium or magnesium. However, if you want to make sure you're getting those, some real quick and dirty ways to do that is by buying a brand of salt substitute called either low salt, new salt, or no salt. These ingredients lists are not perfect. They may include things like fumaric acid or cream of tartar. Those are derived from plants. You know, they have a, the fumaric acid adds a fruity flavor to some extent. So they're not ideal, but if you want to get started and make sure that you have the electrolytes, you can usually go find those in your local grocery stores. They're on the shelf. They're relatively cheap. You may not want to use them long term. Again, those ingredients are not exactly pristine, but they can be a great way to at least get started if you're, you know, waiting for your Amazon order to come in in, in three or four days. Um, you know, I, I've been in that situation too. And it so that's a great way to get started. And then you can also do some other kind of, you know, make other purchases that are more intended for electrolytes. Keto chow drops are often recommended. I personally have never used those, but I know many people who have. And then Trace Minerals, you know, they that's a brand that makes lots of different supplements kind of readily available at a low price point. They have an electrolyte concentrate um, that again has these electrolytes in balance with one another. So you can always look online, look and see what you find. Just make sure you're kind of paying attention to those ratios and, and pay attention to the ingredients list. Please make sure that your electrolyte solutions that you are getting, your blends, don't contain stevia or any unnecessary additives. Uh, you know, in Going Carnivore, we are trying to find food freedom. We want to have freedom of cravings. And if you use an electrolyte mix that continues to have that sweet taste, that stevia or something in there, or even just regular sugar, that's really going to make it difficult for your body to transition uh, away from that and instead embrace this, this carnivore way of eating and the change in palate that comes alongside it. So go for something that's nice and clean and get your electrolytes and use those as supplement. Uh, and if you don't want to do all that, if you're a little, you know, wary of, you know, supplements or blends, that's totally fine. You can do what one of my uh, community members has done for the last year or so, and that is make your own mineral water. I will put the link for that down below. It's very simple. It's a wikihow.com, you know, slash make mineral water. And basically you blend your own, you know, combination of these minerals and it's an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda, Epsom salts, and potassium bicarbonate. And that gets you your sodium, your magnesium, and your potassium. And there you go. It's very simple. You're able to make it yourself. Uh, my member who has suggested this and who has done this for quite some time says that, you know, the initial packets that she bought way back in the day have continued to last because she just uses a very small amount. So it was a very cost-effective way for her to make sure that she's regularly getting these extra minerals and making sure she's getting these um, electrolytes and she has not had any problems with her electrolyte regulation. So I really do appreciate that tip and it's a great one that all of us can follow and, and adopt at a very low cost. And obviously, you know, after that initial purchase, you're good to go and you don't have to continue buying pricey electrolyte supplements. Now, how long will you need to supplement? That will depend on you. Everyone is different. Everyone's journeys and progression is different. Ultimately, your bodies will get to a place where the electrolyte regulation is so much 
more simple and straightforward and your body doesn't need nearly as much of a help or these crutches of leaning on these electrolyte supplements. But for the first three days especially, you are probably gonna need some supplement. At least, at the very least, you are going to need to salt heavily, um, heavily. And, uh, you know, so first three days, that's really kind of that crucial time because that's when you're seeing the biggest shift in um, the, uh, you know, osmotic uh, shift of fluids in your body as you're losing that water and losing the electrolytes. So replace it, especially in those first three days. Also, the first three weeks, you're still getting adapted to carnivore. You're still working on the fat burning. Your body is still trying so, so hard to catch up with where you want to be in your preferred way of eating. So for the first three weeks, you may want to continue to supplement with electrolytes on a fairly regular basis, if not daily. Also, I'm going to extend that out and say for the first three months, you may need to, on occasion, use electrolytes. When I was in my first three months on carnivore, I did have access to the LMNT packets, um, and I found them tremendously helpful. I didn't need a full packet every day. I would use half a packet every day or maybe every other day. And I was able to go based on how I felt over time. And eventually I got to the point where I didn't need to supplement with the electrolytes. I was able to just drink water. And again, I salt my food fairly heavily. So uh, with salting my food to taste and, and just, you know, consuming water, uh, as needed, I, I was able to maintain, you know, the electrolyte balance that is needed. I have at times, though, needed to supplement with magnesium. And I do that either via, you know, those Epsom salt baths like we talked about, or I also have a magnesium uh, supplement that I can add to water. Sometimes I put it directly on my skin and let it absorb. Um, either way, only sometimes do I need to play around with adding in some magnesium. And that's really just kind of here and there. That's not a consistent thing. So, by and large, first three days, first three weeks, first three months, you know, be patient with yourself as your body adjusts, but know that those electrolytes can be very, very helpful. The other category of time on carnivore that you may need to supplement with electrolytes is when you undergo a noticeable change in the amount of carbohydrates that you are taking in. So in my own experience, you know, when I first started carnivore, I wasn't including dairy. But I reached a point where I, you know, was ready to experiment with adding in dairy, and I did so. But then I was ready to take it back out again. And in dropping from having the dairy, which definitely does have an increased number of carbs, I mean, I know we often refer to this as a zero-carb diet, but there are some carnivore-friendly foods that contain carbs. Um, you know, dairy is a big one. Seafood, eggs also contain carbs. Even some organ meats can contain some carbohydrates. So in removing those back out of my diet, I noticed that I needed that electrolyte supplementation. I started to get the headaches and the fatigue and a little bit of that low energy feeling. And that was just in a small shift of carbs. It's not like I was eating 50 plus carbs a day. At that point, I was probably eating more like maybe eight to 10. But in dropping those down out of my diet, I did notice that shift. I would love to know, when have you noticed that shift? Have you also experienced that same sort of thing in transitioning it within a carnivore diet to perhaps a more strict or less strict version of carnivore? What did that do to your electrolyte imbalance? And what are your go-to electrolytes? You know, I recommended a few or at least mentioned a few, the keto chow, the elements, some trace minerals, or making your own mineral water. What do you do to maintain your electrolyte balance? I'm really curious and I would love to know and I think it could be very valuable information to share with others. So if you would, comment that in the comment section below. We can all continue to help each other out as we explore and navigate this journey. If you want to continue to connect with fellow carnivores and do things like talk about electrolytes and how to support your body through transition, I would love to welcome you to join the carnivore wellness community that is hosted on the Mighty Networks platform. There's a link below. It's absolutely free for you to join. I host weekly lives where I pop into the community, answer your questions, talk about different carnivore related topics, and just overall give, you know, a, a nice chance for everyone to connect with one another in that live uh, chat. And then there's also an entire free e-course to help you get started on carnivore with confidence and good foundational knowledge so that you can get started uh, on the right path and, and knowing how to do that effectively and efficiently. Lots of great resources, grocery lists, meal plans, um, some research articles, things like that, all there for you, available for free as soon as you sign up 
That link is below. If you want to take it a step further and join our monthly commitment membership, that is where the magic happens. We host three weekly meetings. These are live Zoom calls where you get to show up, interact, share your stories, your experiences, whatever it is that you're focusing on. You gain some accountability, support, encouragement. You know, we'll help troubleshoot with you if that's what you'd need at that point. And essentially, it's just a great way to connect with others and feel supported in this way of eating. Not many of us have real life carnivore friends but you can have access to that in this online community. And I would love to invite you to join there as well if you think that that would be suitable for you. Again, those links will be down below. If you've enjoyed this video or found it even in the least bit helpful, would you please like and subscribe? I would greatly appreciate it. And that helps me know if I'm giving you the right kind of information. If there's something that you want me to talk about or, you know, are curious about, comment that down below too. I'm always receptive to whatever I find in those comments. So please just let me know how you're doing, how you're feeling, and what your thoughts are on this topic or any others. All right. Thank you for spending this time with me. I will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great, wonderful, meaty day.